So today we are going to be baking a long awaited recipe together. We are going to be making croissants. I have made croissants several times now and I really, really like it. It's more challenging than other recipes and there's more ways for it to go wrong, but I really love it. If you've never watched any of my videos before, I really love to bake and make food and cook and eat, which is where my love for cooking comes from. It's my love for eating. But I really also love to make French pastry. It's my favorite thing to make. So I'm sharing those recipes with you guys. If you have not seen any of my previous baking videos, I will leave them linked in, um, in the card throughout the video and also down below. And they're also in a playlist. But if you guys would like to see how to make classic French croissant, then grab your apron and let's get going. Okay, to begin we have to make our starter. So you're going to take the bowl of a stand mixer, you're going to place 100 grams of warm water in it, and then you're going to take 5 grams of yeast and add it to the water and just stir them together so they're combined. Then you're going to take 100 grams of all-purpose flour and sprinkle that on the top of this mix, trying not to get it to mix in, you just want it to sit on top really. You cover up all that water and yeast mixture with this flour and you'll let it sit for about 15 minutes until you can start seeing cracks in the top of the flour. This is basically just your starter to leaven your croissants so it's going to ferment and we'll wait a few minutes and then it will start to crack and we'll start mixing. So it's been long enough um, so we're going to take our quiche and we are going to mix everything together. So we're going to add more flour, sugar, butter, egg, 45 grams of water, and a pinch of sea salt. Okay, attach your dough hook and then you want to mix it for a minute and a half on medium speed just so that everything can come together. Okay, those come together. So I'm gonna just scrape all the edges down with a rubber spatula and just kind of work it till all the bits are in. And then I'm gonna transfer it to a medium bowl, cover it and let it sit for one and a half hours for its first proof. If you wanna create the ideal proofing temperature for your dough, take some boiling water, just like I boil mine in an electric kettle, put it in, a, in any kind of dish. I, just use, I usually use the spread pan and then put it in your oven in the bottom uh, and put your dough on top so that the steam will warm the oven and make it a nice temperature but don't turn the oven on or it'll be too hot and the butter will start oozing out of your dough then we just wait all right it has been about an hour hour and a half and our dough has risen significantly so sprinkle it on my workspace and turn my dough out There it is. So we're not kneading it, we're mostly just flattening it into a disc that's about one inch thick. And then we're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and sit it in the fridge to rest for about an hour. All right, in the meantime, while that uh, is in the oven, we're gonna take 150 grams of butter. And you um, ideally would like like 82% fat French European style butter. And I'm going to take this on my sill pat. If you don't have a sill pat, you can just use plastic wrap. Um, and I'm going to put my butter on here. Basically, we're going to shape it into like a square so that when it's time to make our books, uh, do our folds in the dough and fold the butter into the dough, it's really easy. So just tap on the butter and squish it a little bit and make it a little bit more mal malleable. Then you want to take your other sill pat or your other piece of plastic wrap, put it on top. And you want to shape it into a 8x6 rectangle. Alright, here's my little rectangle. I'm going to put this in the fridge to chill for about 45 minutes while the dough is chilling and then we will assemble. Alright. 
So it's been sitting in the fridge for a little while. It's chill. It's also risen a little bit, as you can see, the dough. So I'm going to take the dough out of the plastic wrap onto this flour countertop. I'm going to roll it out to like about 16 inches long and 8 inches wide. So I, don't, I want to keep it about as wide as it is here, but roll it long. So take your rolling pin and make sure you're going evenly. And if you're worried about it sticking, you can flip it over and roll. That's about 16 inches long. Here's our butter. It's a little bit firm because it's been sitting in there for a minute. You don't want your butter to be too cold or it will crack when you're doing your fold and roll. You want to make sure your butter is pliable but not warm or it will melt. So you don't want it to crack and make chunks. You want it to evenly distribute when we're rolling it out. But you also don't want it to seep out of the sides because then you won't end up with a croissant. You'll end up with a very dense, non-flaky, non-fluttery piece bread. So I'm just going to roll over it to make sure it's really good to go. And then you want to take your butter and plop it down kind of in the middle. Now you want to fold your dough over, one third over, one third over. You want your butter to be completely trapped in the side with the edges closed so that it doesn't seep out of your guy here. So now we're ready to make our first turn. More, a little bit more flour on my worktop here. And take my little blob of dough and butter and make sure it doesn't stick, so just make sure it's really coated. Okay, you want to put your short folded ends on the top and your crease in the middle, and then you want to roll in continuous strokes so that the butter doesn't crack, it just rolls smoothly. You want to roll out your dough here. Just so it nice and, and we're gonna roll it out about 20 inches long. If yours starts to get a little bit wide like mine has, it's already a little bit wider than I want to. You kind of want to keep it about eight inches wide. I fold mine into thirds like this, and then I'll just keep rolling. So it's a little bit of an extra turn. This is not in the recipe. This is something I've just learned and done before when I'm making croissants, and it works well for me and hasn't caused any problems. So far, so good. And you're just rolling it out, smooth, even pressure. Okay, now we're gonna fold it into thirds again. So this third over, this third over. Perfect, there's my thirds, beautiful. Now, I'm gonna take some plastic wrap that I have left over from before wrap my dough up in here and I'm going to refrigerate it for another 30 minutes or so so, the, so that the butter and the dough will both harden and be ready for the next turn. All right, it's been sitting rising for a while, resting in the fridge. Now it's time for our second turn. So I'm going to grab it off of the plastic wrap, flour my work surface, and then I'm going to roll it when you want your um, open sides um, vertically and then I'm going to roll it out again to 20 inches fold it again. And you pretty much want to keep it as the same width that it is right now. So not rolling it out wide, but rolling it out long with just smooth strokes. Same thing, fold it like a book. Wrap it up and rest it. All right, so it's been probably like four hours-ish since I last put the dough in the fridge. You can rest it overnight, but since I've been doing this all day and kind of resting it for longer than suggested all day, I didn't feel like I needed to rest it that long, but you can see it's risen again, um, just slowly growing. So I'm gonna pull it out of the fridge, flour my work surface again, and then you wanna put the open ends up and down and the folded ends on the sides and I'm going to roll it out again just like I have been doing. Alright, 
And there we have our almost croissants. This is the last one. This should be your third to full turn. So last turn, last time in the fridge. Then we'll roll it out one more time and cut and shape our croissants. All right, last roll. Just about perfect 20 inches. All right, so now it's time to cut and shape the croissants. Get a paring knife, and I like to do, usually when I make a batch, I, I like to do about half chocolate croissants and half regular croissants. So I'm going to find the midway point here, about 10 inches, cut the dough in half. And so this side is gonna be the chocolate croissants and this side is gonna be the normal croissants. Um, so for the chocolate croissants, you can cut them just in half, kind of eyeball it down the middle. And then you want them to be uh, about four inches wide. So I'm gonna make marks here on my dough and just cut like this. They're basically going to be rectangles, so. And then this one on the end is going to be a bit small. But I'm going to take my two cut pieces, my two end pieces, and stick them together by where I, the seam, so that they'll stick together a little bit more easily. And then I'll just mush them together. It's not going to make a pretty croissant, but it's an extra croissant. And that's fine with me. So just marry those two little guys together. All right, so the, the regular croissants are a little bit more difficult to shape. So every three and a half inches, I'm gonna make a little mark on the top of this. So one here, a little slit, I guess. One here, and then that's just under three and a half inches. And then in, on this one, about halfway, in, in the middle of where I've made the marks on the top, I'm just going to eyeball it and make the marks on the bottom. And then you pretty much want to um, attach diagonally, corner to corner, the marks. So Alright, then you do the same thing on this side. You take your little excess pieces. This is going to be a gimpy croissant, but that's okay. Squish them together until they make a little triangle. I'm even gonna try and help this one on its way a little bit more. It's not gonna be very cute, but it'll work. Okay, and there are your little croissant bits. So, um, to form them, um, we'll do the triangles first because they're a bit more tricky. So to roll these into croissants, you wanna take one of your triangles, we'll start with this one first because it's gonna be the easiest to do and you want to have a little slit at the top of the triangle you want to fold those out to make little like dog ears and then roll down towards the tip this isn't going to be a pretty one but as you roll it should form a little croissant so I'm going to cut a little slit right at the top of the triangles in the middle and again you take it and you fold them out like little dog ears out like this and then you roll away. And it's pr it's easiest in my opinion if you just tuck the little triangle underneath your classic Pillsbury crescent roll shape. six fat little rolls. Beauty miss. I'm going to set them on a sill pad to do their final prove. So spread them out. They're going to they're going to grow. So you want to spread them out enough so they're not, not going to grow into each other. They're also going to bake on this sheet. So spread them out enough that they're not going to grow into each other. 
and then you'll do the same trick again where you put them in the oven with boiling water to create steam and help them to rise but you do not want the oven to be too hot at this point or the, op the butter which is now open on these laminated sides is going to seep out and you're not going to get the croissants that you want. All right. For the chocolate croissants, the process is pretty similar, also pretty easy. You want to take the long side on the bottom, and then you place your chocolate in here. You can use chocolate chips, which is what I usually use. And then you just roll over, roll them up like a burrito, and then you want the seam on the bottom, and you squish them a little bit flat so that they aren't like a burrito, so that they're a longer, wider shape. And then you're going to do the same proving process with these guys in the oven with the steam for about an hour. A lot of proving in this recipe, but it's worth it, I promise you. All right, daylight is gone. It's been a little less than an hour, but they've obviously puffed up quite a bit. I'm going to take some egg wash, which is basically just a mix of egg and some kind of dairy fat. I didn't have any, it's usually cream. I didn't have any, so I used some Greek yogurt. We'll see how it works. You just want to lightly brush your pastries with this. You do not want to put too much pressure or they will start to deflate and then all of your hard work and your proving will have been for naught. So delicately wash, just brush over all of the exposed surfaces with a little bit of egg to make the nice brown color. All right, so oven is preheated to 375. I'm gonna put these in to bake until they're golden. There we go. And I'm gonna set the timer for 18 minutes. And then I'll come back and check on them then. And if they're ready to go, we'll pull them out. If they're not, we won't. All right, it's been exactly 18 minutes and my little babies are done. They look amazing. Look at them. Oh my gosh. The screen. They look so good. So you can definitely see the difference that the egg wash makes. Like everywhere where it's very dark is where there was egg wash. The lamination, the layers, the crispiness, the beauty, the grace. They look really good. And they smell amazing. If you could smell them right now, you'd be salivating. So guys, that is it for my little tutorial on croissants. Like, look how steamy and delicious they are. I love them. Do you hear that? They're like buttery and flaky inside. Oh my gosh. They're really so good. So, I hope you found this helpful. Um, croissants are not a beginner's thing if you've never made any kind of pastry before or like really baked anything before I wouldn't go for this first but they're really not that difficult once you get the hang of it I mean the lamin it just takes a, it's kind of a time-consuming process so you can do it overnight or you can just spend all day doing it like I have now these will be ready for breakfast in the morning they don't last a super long time to eat, to eat them while they're relatively fresh but yeah if you're like confident in your baking ability like you've made bread before any kind of leavened dough um you should be okay to make these and i hope you enjoy them so i hope this little video was helpful to you and you um if you have any questions leave me a comment down below or shoot me a dm on instagram um or if you're like making them and troubleshooting them and something turns out wrong let me know and i'll try to help you but that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will hopefully see you in another video. Bye.